New at noon, the number of low-performing schools in North Carolina is up. New state data released just two hours ago show about a third of all public schools in the state are on that list now. WRO's Adam Owens was at the State Board of Education meeting when the test scores were released. Adam, we're focusing on major school districts in our area because parents want to know how their child's school is doing. And you can understand that concern as well, Renee. That's right. Let's start with Wake County, the district we're standing in right now. 38 schools are now considered low performing in this district. That is up from 30 schools back in 2019. 2019 being the last year that schools were added or removed from that low performing list. Across the state, more than 860 schools are now considered low performing. That's compared to 488 in the 2018-2019 school year. State school officials have called this a gut punch, but not an unexpected one with difficulties that we've been dealing with in the pandemic. A school is considered low performing based on student test scores. A low performing school is one that got a D or an F and that did not exceed expectations in their growth. Let's get a look at the numbers of those schools in some districts in our area. Almost 20 percent of schools in Wake County are low performing. Nearly 22 percent of the schools in Durham are considered low performing. In Cumberland County, more than 20 percent. In Johnston County, around 10 percent. And in Edgecombe County, more than 70 percent of schools are considered low performing. As you're looking at those numbers in Johnston and Cumberland, those are actually improved numbers. Cumberland County Superintendent Marvin Connolly says that took a lot of hard work. Well, our teachers and principals have been working very hard, and our families and students. Everyone has been working hard to recover, and recovery is not over. Uh, we'll continue. You know, in addition to looking at test scores in and of themselves, a lot of the state education officials say they want to focus more on growth, getting students back to where they were pre-pandemic. And there is some good news in that. In math and science in the last school year, we did see some of the numbers start to inch upward, proof that a lot of these educators in these districts all around our area and all around the state are making some gains, getting their students back to where they were before the pandemic. There's a lot to dig into these numbers. We'll continue to do that throughout the day. Renee. That is encouraging, but certainly there are also a lot of challenges ahead for school systems. Adam Owens.